Hello and welcome to <coughs> excuse me, part 7 of the series of videos I've been working on about the, the Free Angels messages. In this part, which is called Creation and Salvation, we'll have a brief look at the relationship between our salvation and the creative power of God. Now we know that God is in the changing business, but which part of us is he looking to change? Which part of us needs to change before he comes again? Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not until he comes again will this corruptible put on incorruptible. Not until he comes again will this sinful flesh be transformed. For that particular teaching, you go to first. Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 to 53 so before God comes again we all need to be changed God doesn't deal with our flesh he's dealing with our mind so our minds need to be renewed or transformed so what is the standard that we aim toward what is the standard what is the the ideal Philippians 5 verse 2 sorry Philippians 2 verse 5 Philippians 2 verse 5 reads let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus so there we have the standard so our minds need to be renewed and the standard or ideal is the mind of Christ so how does this this transforming process take place what what is the power behind this transformation or this renewing of the mind 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says or reads part of the text if any man be in Christ he is a new creature or a new creation so there we have the power behind this renewing of the mind that needs to be achieved before Christ comes <coughs> it's the creative power of God now when you read certain parts of the scripture in particular Psalms 33 verses 6 and 9 you see that the active power involved in the creation of this world was the Word of God it says in verse 6 of Psalms 33 by the word of the Lord were the heavens made verse 9 begins by saying he spoke or he commanded and it stood fast so the active power in the creation of this world was was the word the word of God so it would be a good idea I believe to go back to Genesis chapter 1 which we all know is an account of the creation and see if we by looking at that account can learn a few lessons about our salvation or the sanctification process that we all need to go through verse 1 of Genesis 1 begins by introducing a key attribute of God his creative power it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth he goes on to describe that the world was without form and void and not long after it describes that God said let there be light light came and we know on a day to day basis that God added to that without form and void world until eventually he declared after he had finished it is very good so every day God said it is good on the final day he said it is very good he then we know ended his work and rested on the seventh day so how can we or how do we learn from that particular process well God could have done all things in one day or even in one instant but he chose not to what does that teach us about sanctification I believe that it, it teaches us that it's a gradual process a day by day process which is controlled by or governed by our reading of his word when we read his word it will transform us if we allow it that is because every time we come across a promise in the Bible we either choose to or not to apply that promise to our experience so as the world was created gradually over six days so we as Christians are we could say created after the image of Christ over a period of time on a day to day basis it's not a work that is done in an instant it's a gradual work and at the end of that work a time will arrive I believe just before
Christ comes again, when God will say of his people, it is very good or they are very good. That time, I believe, is the time when the mind of Christ is totally reproduced or completely reproduced in his people. Then God will come and claim that people by God's grace, us, as his own and all things will come to an end. But the latter part of the first angel's message puts strong emphasis on God's creative power and I believe that's why. Because of the close relationship between God, his creative power and our salvation or the sanctification process. So there you have it. Hopefully I've put it across clearly and in a way that can be understood. Any questions or comments I'd be happy to receive. Guidance rebukes. I'm open to them all. So thank you for listening. God bless and until next time, pray for me as I pray for you. Bye bye.